when we talk about what led to the feeling of the last boat out of Shanghai, it really was um, a, something that began much earlier about the disintegration of a society, a war, a civil war, the collapse of uh, an economy of an entire country, and people not knowing whether they could live. And the last, last straw, which was to find out that, oh, and we're going to have a revolution too? And people really began to run for the exits. But so I started my book trying to find characters for people whose stories could be um, uh, shared here and through their lives and through their very different um, experiences uh, kind of convey the uh, broader sense of what was going on in, in a whole country, really, and in the city of Shanghai. So this is one of the characters in about 1936, and um, she, it's a girl, there are two boys and two girls who are my main characters, and it's, uh, um, she was living in a small, what we would call a town or a village today, and probably has a million people in it right now, but um, it's in the sort of exurbs or suburbs of Shanghai, uh, near s the city of Suzhou. And so she's in her home, a little hut with her father, who she calls Baba, and her name is only Little Sister. Baba announced that he would take Little Sister on a train to Suzhou, 60 miles away toward Shanghai. She remembered every moment of that journey, for she had been giddy that Baba had chosen her, not one of her brothers. She sat on her father's lap, her eyes glued to the window, mesmerized by the neat rice fields and towns, just like hers, sweeping by in a blur. When they arrived in Suzhou, she saw men and women dressed in fine silk fabrics and even foreign outfits, unlike her mother and father, who wore roughly woven traditional dress. Big posters showed pretty ladies with curly black hair, wearing tight chi pao, promoting cigarettes, mosquito coils, and rat poison. When they left the train station, Baba flagged down the driver of a wooden moon-wheeled cart. After a twisting, bumpy ride over arched stone bridges and canals lined by weeping willows, they finally came to a stop at a small store. Inside, her father spoke to the shopkeepers in a low voice while she stood waiting by the door looking at the parade of vendors and hawkers on the street. Soon Baba called for her and told her to stand still beside him. The shopkeepers looked into her mouth and twisted her, uh, squeezed her thin arms. When they were finished poking and prodding her, one of them took her hand and led her to another room. As she turned to look for her father, she saw his back as he headed out the door. Baba, Baba, she had shouted after him. He didn't turn around. Baba, come back, she cried. How could he leave without her? The stranger gently pushed her into a small dark storeroom and locked the door. <coughs> Alone and terrified of what might lurk in the darkness, at first she could only whimper. Then she steeled herself and called for her father as hard as she could until she grew hoarse and couldn't shout any more. Exhausted, she sobbed herself to sleep. When the little girl awakened on the musty dirt floor, she thought she had had a terrible nightmare. But when she tried to open the door, it wouldn't budge. She could see the glare of the daylight around the cracks. Once again, she screamed for her father. Baba never came. So I heard this story in my 50s and it was told to me by my mother. And it was a story that she had never shared with me from the time that I was a little kid, because like a lot of children, I had asked, you know, um, can you tell me something about what life was like with, when you were a little girl? And my mother always said, oh, that was wartime. It's a bad memory. And that would be the end of it. And I never knew anything until I stopped asking after a while because I thought there was nothing to say. And then, as a well into adulthood, I was having dinner with my mom one night, and I, I said, oh, mom, too bad you can't tell me about growing up in China. And she said, all right, you want to know? I'll tell you. 
And so here she was well into her 70s and she had never shared this story before, not to me, not to anyone, not even to my father. And she began to pour out what had happened to her as a child, being left behind, abandoned by her father, left for, and that's part of the story of what happens to her. You know, as the start of the war happens, he left her behind because uh, society was collapsing. It was preparing for war. There wasn't money that people had to support their children. So it was really a time where people had to decide, who will we feed? Who won't we feed? Who will we keep in our family? And my mother always knew. She said, they gave me away because I was a girl.